This is the game that everyone's talking about and everyone's playing. You don't want to miss out on the poker phenomenon that's taking the world by storm. And tonight, some of the biggest names in the game are playing for a piece of a half a million dollar prize pool. We're into our third heat of the PartyPoker.net World Open and things are hotting up. Last week we saw a great performance by the man with the mouth, Tony G. He dispatched a Roy the Boy Brinley and Barry Hearn and looks like a strong favourite to go all the way. Tonight six more pros including one of the biggest names in Swedish poker and the recent European Open champion will be hoping to pick up the pocket rockets and flop the nuts. Let's join our commentary team, Jesse May and Kenna James. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jesse May, joined by the cowboy, Kenna James. Kenna, last week, Tony G, textbook way to run over a table. <laughs> well, you know, that's what Tony G does. I mean, he is a steamroller, and certainly last week, uh, he proved true to form as the deck helped him out, but I don't know that he needed much, uh, Jesse. That's uh, usually how he uh, takes control of a table, and you saw it in action last week. It might not be so easy tonight, Let's see who's playing and where they're sitting. I'm Dominic Kofer. I've been playing um, poker since about 16 months. 95% of it on the internet. Everything is possible. I mean, I might, I might be the first one out in the third hand. That might happen. I might, I might win the, uh, I might win um, the heat. My name's David Finney. I've played this game. For the last 30 years all my life, from its inception really. I like winning, you know, everybody likes that bit, but that's only part of it, you know. You've got to like the game as well. I'm uh, Tony Nichols from uh, Nottingham, England. Uh, I've been playing poker for about two years. My name's Ian Fraser. UK. I won that. European, I won that. This one's called The World, I think, isn't it? Natural progression. <laughs> My name is Ken Leonard. I'm from Stockholm, Sweden. I'm 35 years old, been a pro for 10 years. I'm uh, very experienced, very versatile, and I'm a good reader, and I'm a good actor. My name is John McGill. I'm from Palomino, Northern Ireland. I play poker on a fairly regular basis. I've qualified for some big competitions, the World Series of Poker, Victor yeah. Chandler Cup. Very tough lineup. A lot of eyes will be on the Swede, Ken Leonard. Swede's so tough in poker. Well, the Swedes, it's like they invented poker. That's how <laughs> tough they are, and Ken Leonard is no exception. I've been playing poker with this uh, gentleman since 1997, and let me tell you, he is one shrewd competitor and one that I would not want to see across the table. But the man in form who's won two back-to-back -back televised yeah. tournaments, Ian Fraser, how big wow. is form? Well, you know, I mean, he's going to be a formidable opponent because he's very comfortable. He's going to have a lot of confidence. And the other competitors at the table, you know, not a lot of experience, but they've got, they're, they may be short on experience, but they're long on cash. They've won some money playing poker, so it should be an interesting, challenging match tonight. Everyone in with a shouter's chance. Let's get over to the table and check out the action. Point. Off and running here. First hand will feature button in the six seat, that is John McGill, and uh, blinds will be one in 2,000. Each player beginning this game with 100,000 in tournament chips, those yellow chips, 1,000 each. The blues are with two, and the reds, 5,000 apiece. The player going to the semifinal will be the one who garners 600,000 in total chips, and that shot there of Ken Leonard. He's always focused at the poker table. He's focused on the money. Give me that money, 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 <laughs> money, money, money. There's a song there somewhere. I'm not sure. Where. <laughs> Definitely. I think it was Pink Floyd. <laughs> First hand out, and Dave oh, Finney's wow. in the big blind. First action on Anthony Nichols. It's always tough when it's your first time playing in a TV tournament. 
Oh, sure. You get to, you know, not only battle your other opponents, but battle your nerves. And sometimes you just want to get out there and like a boxer, you know, get that first hit, Pass. you know, get that first bloody Pass. lip, you know, just to Pass. knock you back into reality. Raised tight play 7, this first times. hand by everybody but Dominic Kofert. Who, uh, is this optimistic? Yeah. Well, Pass. he's in back position, so. You got a show first hand. He brings yep. it in with Jack 10 and uh, <laughs> easily wins the blind. You card. know, Jess, that's, that's a play that I like <laughs> to make. The first hand, usually, for some reason, everybody is very tight the first hand, and I'll raise with almost any two. And. Uh, sometimes just win the pot right there, but he just doesn't want to play that first hand. It's like the first hand heebie-jeebies. McGill in the big blind. Cofert. Cofert, whose nickname is Corn. <laughs> you gotta Pass. like a you gotta like a guy Pass. who has a nickname Corn. Pass. <laughs> Sounds like he's either a boxer or I guess a poker Pass. player. Yeah. Cool. Maybe a farmer. Corn, is that a fruit? <laughs> no, I mean a vegetable. <laughs> a fruit. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking yeah. about. Look at this. What? John McGill Raised raising from the big blind with a three high. And this is yeah. after <laughs> we've seen him fold the ace jack. This is incredible. You know, I mean, he must be a real situational player. Here I am talking about fruits and vegetables, and John McGill is out there raising with the three deuce. <laughs> I thought I was confused. He's really bewildered. But, you know, he might think we're playing low ball. <laughs> I don't know that friendly, is it? That's great, Jesse. <coughs> well, McGill is an Irish player. And uh, he certainly has his own tune here. So make sense of that. Fold the ace jack, play the three deuce. That is, uh, he's got a reverse strategy there. It's going to be t tough putting him on cards. I mean, you know, and I am a believer. If you do the opposite of what you think you should be doing, you'll be closer to the truth. But that might be stretching in a bit. <laughs> Pass. Vinny playing pretty tight, folding the ace. Yes. Looks like these players do not want to play. Whoever Ugh. steps out and takes charge Pass. here is going to gain an early advantage. Somebody needs to step up to the plate. Pass. Option here on Co. Four or five of hearts, suited connectors, even though Jets. they're low. Yeah, it seems like Miguel could have afforded a thousand there, huh? Right. So we got corn against nickels. <laughs> and it's a corny flop. <laughs> Check. Oh, look at this. Tony Nichols has flopped the nuts. Check. He sure has. And Korn has flopped top pair. And, uh, I think Dominic may have been trying to check Ray's on the uh, flop, but he could be in trouble here. This jack may save him because an overcard has come to the board now. So when he, he gets some heat, he should be able to get away from this hand now that he has second pair. I mean, you are an advocate. Cool. Kenna of not slow playing hands when you flop a big one. No, and uh, Nichols exactly. is slow playing this one so much. He's, uh, he, yeah, he's going backwards. Well, I mean, he, he just may not get maximum value out of it. He's certainly not. That's a great point, uh, Jesse, because now any nine makes a straight. I don't see Dominic uh, putting in another chip in this pot. You know? Check. He's going to have to make a, such a small value bet to get any money. 4,000. 4,000 is a pretty small bet. It's going to cause uh, Dominic to think about it. Let's see what he does. Call. Call. Bet and call. Tony Nichols flopped the nuts, played it so slow, he was able to reel a little money in. But uh, think of what could have been. Right. If he had bet that flop, okay, and Dominic had flopped top pair, this is why I don't. I'm not an advocate of slow playing because you never know what your opponent's going to do. You have to give your opponents an opportunity to bluff and to move you off a hand even when you flop the nuts. Nichols with the straight. That's moved him up the leaderboard, but it's Ian Fraser. He's won two hands and is up on top. Well, still not uh, much... Uh, chip disparity in the early going first round very tight play you know uh, I expect as as the blinds go up that will force the players to gamble it's this first level just a feeling out stage mm -hmm. it's 2,000 on Tony Nichols 
Well, that looks nice. Pass. He's five. Pass. <laughs> not nice enough, evidently. <laughs> I guess these players right. are looking for deuce three. I, I, I guess that's why we're up here. <laughs> oh, it, it, it turns out to be a good fold because uh, McGill now with pocket nines. Uh, pass. 6,000 on Dave Finney. That raised a little too Biggins. much. And McGill advertising, showing the two nines. Why do players do that? Well, you know, I guess they do it to, you know, show that uh, they're not bluffing so that they can pick up pots later. But too often what happens is the tight players show their hand when they don't need to. They actually Nothing need to advertise a looser it. image. Yeah. You know, and I don't think that um, he's going to be out there bluffing a lot. So I would be, you know, tossing in my good hands face down and showing my bluffs so that I could get action when I need it. This Pass. is one man who bluffs Pass. a lot, Fraser, but uh, right now it's Ooh, McGill. McGill now with Cole. pocket queens. He's a tricky guy. <laughs> he is. Now he's just called. I'm confused. I got to tell you, I'm Grace seeing the hands and I'm confused. Title. This Pass. man has more curves than a chorus Pass. girl. <laughs> well, he has trapped Coford here. It's a raise of 7,000. Cool. And well, he uh, hasn't quite trapped him yet, Jesse, because if a four comes on the flop, he could lose all his chips. Yeah, are you surprised McGill didn't re-raise on the flop? Before the flop, I mean? Yes. Yes, I am. What if an ace or king comes? Okay, check T7. Oh, my! Look at this flop. It's set over set. Wow. <laughs> now he's going to look like a genius Ten slow thousand. playing this hand. Now, here we are. Kofert betting his trips right out. I like this play. Yeah. I mean, evidently, you know, I mean, uh, we have the benefit of seeing the cards, and we know the trouble that he's in for. McGill doing his best Cole. to look confused. He looks like he's looking for his car keys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should get a good acting things. job here, a Royal Shakespeare acting job. Uh, McGill's checked in the blind. Yep. And uh, basically, Kofert's drawing dead to a four. Is there any way... Right. Go for it to escape from this hand. Well, if a heart comes, that would make a possible flush on board, and he may um, save chips. But I expect uh, a lot <coughs> of chips to go in on 4th Street right here. 30,000. 30,000. That's a big bet. 30,000. Well, that should be enough for... Um, McGill to pull the trigger and move all the rest of the chips in the pot. If he slow plays any further here, it's just really poor play. Very greedy. Right now, McGill has the nuts, the best hand possible. Yep. All in. There he goes. Raised. Very good. All in. He's dwelled up. He's moved in. And I expect a call within five seconds call. here. Yep. Call. That's what happened. Desperately all unlucky for Kofer. You don't see set over set too often, Ken. About once every yeah, six months if you play full time. <laughs> <laughs> Rain or shine, huh? Well, and here we saw it once in six minutes. There's no, getting out of that no, Scott. There is one card in the deck for Dominic Kofert. If it doesn't come, he is history. No. Normally you would say he's toast, but I will say that he is corn. <laughs> he's a rasher of bacon. Corn. He's out. Five, 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 five players. Six, six, no, I didn't. Very didn't unfortunate to turn of uh, <laughs> cards uh, for uh, Colfort there because he didn't really do anything wrong. You know, McGill did not come in with the raise with the queen. It's very uh, plausible. The correct play is to limp in with the fours. And, uh, you know, when you flop a set, you have to figure you have the best hand. Yeah, right or wrong, it's made McGill look like a genius. And Colfort still sitting down. Yeah, you got it. They're going to have to get the broom. He's got it with change. <laughs> He's shocked. Okay. Oh, he does have covered. Okay. No, he does have. Yeah, he is. He is covered. <laughs> well, we didn't get to see much of him. Sometimes you have all the focus, all the skill, and none of the luck. Pair and pair, set over set. Both players flopping three of a kind. The money all got in, and three queens beating three fours to take us to five players. The rain is pretty low. Yeah, thanks, Bob. Well, some players believe in lucky charms, and there is a, what kind of a cat is that? Is that a chessire? Chessire? Yes. I'm not sure, but if McGill gets another big pair, I'm going to have to buy it. He's just dead.
I've got one here, yeah, but I'm, I'm gonna have to. John McGill Brian. in very good shape yeah, here. 192,000. Poker is skill. All skill, believe me. <laughs> set over set, Kenna. Have you been on both ends of that proposition? Oh, well, of course I have. You know, uh, in the years I've been playing, you, you, you pretty much see it all. Um, you know, I'm looking here. Uh, Dominic's only been playing 16 months, though. Uh, I'm sure he's uh, now got a little bit more experience playing for the cameras. And, uh, you know, he'll take something away from this. I'm not sure exactly <laughs> what. <laughs> Maybe a, a bit of indigestion. How are the other players going to react to you? Uh, John McGill's big stack now. Well, you know, John, I, it looks like he's got a tight game plan, except for that deuce three. You know, it, it's kind of interesting to see where he's going to go with that. Is he going to start playing more hands? Is he going to take control of the table? Or, you know, is he going to just let the cards uh, do the talking? Well, it's still early, but one player staked to a big chip lead, Ian Fraser and Ken Leonard, still sizing up the table. Let's see what happens from here. So we're just eight hands in, and German pro Dominic Kofer is poker history. Trip fours blown away by trip queens. John McGill finds himself sitting pretty on top of the leaderboard, but looking over his shoulder at Ken Leonard and Ian Fraser. Looking at the chip position scrolling across the board there. Basically, no one has moved a chip except McGill. Mm -hmm. We've got all of Kofi's. Well, Ian Fraser's been out there a couple Hi. times. Now, I guess we have our answer right there with uh, McGill folding King Ten of Diamonds. He's not really an under-the-gun man, is he? No, well, he's, he is uh, content to sit on his stack, to sit on his eggs, oh. as we say. And we do have action, though, with Dave Finney and Anthony Nichols in this pot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Nichols Hi. has position but a dominated hand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, interesting to see what happens if they both miss, as it always is. Well, they don't, actually. Dave Finney flops top pair with yeah. aces. And once again, we have the case of the Five slow thousand. play. <laughs> he's <laughs> tricky, Dave Finney. He's played several of these uh, televised right. events. And uh, he's been around in the Race Birmingham ten, scene ten, for ten, about ten, 30 ten. years. You know, I like, look at, look at how he looks. He just looks like he has absolutely <laughs> nothing. Nice. <laughs> he's one you of know? those great characters in poker. He, yeah. Uh, I understand oh, he yeah. used to buy all of Elton John's old clothes at auctions. Is that right? And, uh, yeah, he, <laughs> he, he brings out the wardrobe from time he to time. He looks like he can't be bothered stacking the chips. <laughs> <laughs> he oh, looks boy. like a man who's had a few big pairs uh, cracked in his time, doesn't he? <laughs> Another pot. Oh, my goodness. I had to stack those chips. You'll need to know what beats what in poker, so let's check out the ranking of hands in Texas Hold'em. Every five-card poker hand falls in the official ranking of poker hands. At the bottom, high card only. Higher than that is one pair. Two pair is higher still, and then three of a kind, sometimes called a set. A straight is five cards in a row of any suits. Aces play high or low in straights, and a flush is five cards of the same suit in any order. A full house is three of a kind plus a pair. Four of a kind is what it says, and a straight flush is what you're looking for. That's five cards in a row, all the same suit. Tap yourself on the back if you get a royal flush. That's a straight flush, ace high. You look like you want to go sleep at the end there. No, I'm not. I'm just, I, I'm always uncomfortable in the heat. Right. It's a terribly tough game, and this structure, I mean, it's amazing, because even though it starts out very slow, you know the clubs, guys will be slinging the chips you know, in on no hands. That's, right, that's uh, right. As the blinds oh, go up. Oh, here we go. Ian Frazier, I'm going to predict he's going to play this hand. Ian was very disappointed. It had been almost 12 hands, and he hadn't seen aces yet. The man <laughs> in form. <laughs> but, uh, he's... He just yes. limped in here. Right. Okay. Is this dangerous? Wow. It is dangerous, you know, but all these players are playing this way. And I find that um, the European players tend to slow play, uh, especially big hands before the flop, a lot more than the Americans. Okay. It, it is, you know, people ask me, what are the differences of play? And this is one of them right here. Well, Tony Nichols doing something you would advocate, which is trying to define his hand with a lead out bet. Mm -hmm. Is he going to find out? Uh, Raise. I think so. 
7, See, now this is a perfect situation. Plus. You know, you bet for information, your opponent tells oh. you you're beat, and you fold. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> well, not in this case. Nickel's looking for the four of the deuce. Yep. That could make things complicated. Yes, well, now he's now okay. he's turned an open end straight. This is... Ten. See? 10,000. Now he's actually pricing his opponent into the pot, which means he's giving his opponent value to call because now, you know, he's got a lot of outs. Any six, any ace... No spades. A deuce or a four. Here an ace, is. he'd be in real trouble. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, it is an ace. Unbelievable. Wow. That wow. does make a third spade on board. But uh, Fraser is going to have trouble laying down those uh, three aces. Yeah, Absolutely. He is. No, come into the water. The water's yeah. warm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the water, it's more like quicksand. Unbelievable. This is this is a display of how not to play pocket aces, and this is why. They are susceptible, you know, to hands just like this. Oh, Deuce oh, four. He's passed! Wow, it was only wonderful 10, pass. A wonderful pass. No, I, no I, maybe he has. He, I think he said, I want to pass. Oh, I see. He, he bluffed us. He, <laughs> he bluffed did. us, Jesse. It would have been, a, it would have been <laughs> unbelievable. It would have been a pass. tremendous it's pass. But, I mean, at the end of the day, it was only 10,000. The all-in bet might have um, he's got to he's got to want to puke when he sees that, that when he sees that hand right. You look at the best possible starting hand, two aces. You look over at your opponent. He's got deuce four. He's getting the chips. All you can do is scratch your nose and say, uh oh. And Nichols making a speech, Rick. He's telling. Ian Fraser, there was no hand I could put you on. <laughs> Have you ever seen aces cracked by a deuce four? It happens. Pair on the flop, straight draw on the turn, and those three aces on the river for Ian Fraser, the worst thing that happened to him. It made Tony Nichols a straight. Ian Fraser has such a great track record in these TV tournaments, but it's a little scratch tonight. He's struggling out there, and beats like that aren't going to help him. Let's hear from Jesse and Kenna. Well, this game be getting a bit of cruel and unusual punishment, Kenna. We've already seen three fours crack, now three aces. But was was that could that have been avoided by Ian Fraser? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, when you slow play two aces, you're just asking for trouble. You know, the trap hands are like the deuce four and the seven nine, not the two aces. If you want to trap with aces, you come in strong and hope you run into a bigger hand like kings, queens, jacks, or ace king, and somebody's going to give you action. You don't want action from hands like deuce four because this is what can happen. It'll be interesting to see what Ian Fraser does from here. We know he's a cool customer, but he must have steam floating out his ears. Well, you know, one of the you know key yeah. principles yeah. in yeah. winning yeah. poker yeah. strategy is don't get greedy. Yeah. You know, well, do not get greedy, and greed is a killer. No, I don't think he'll um, bet anymore. He, and right he, there, you know, with the aces, he, he, he wanted the action. Well, you've been he got the action, and I'm. not the result that he wanted. And uh, instead of uh, they say with aces, you either lose a big pot or win a small one, and that's exactly what happened there. Here's Deuce Four again. Yeah, well, this will be Tony Nichols' lucky hand. I don't think Ian Fraser is going to give a free flop, but he has. He's a cool guy, Ian Fraser, and he's been so successful in this format, so maybe he's not hot enough. Ken Leonard has limped into this pot. This is like well, the first hand he's played. Yeah, well, this is Ken Leonard's first reasonable hand that he's had. I mean, two cards above a 10, Jack 10. It's a good hand to make a straight with. Tony Nichols again with the bottom pair. This four deuce might be a very underrated hand, Jesse. You know, I might have to reevaluate this hand if another deuce or a four comes, I gotta tell you. Poker's about always learning, I guess. Uh huh. Nice little bet from Ken here. The first hand he's played and uh, he's bluffing at it. Yeah, well, he's gonna represent, uh, you know, he's gonna take the lead in the pot and see where it uh, takes him. And it takes him the pot. See, now this is where image helps you. Ken has not played a hand. He's not put a bet into the pot, right? He's bided his time well. And now he he, he yeah. finally bets out. Two. And his opponents, you know, give him credit. Yeah. Give him no. credit for a hand. No. No. And no. building your table no. image is very important. Felt yeah. like two. Ken yet two to opponents. make a pair, basically. And he's got what he started <coughs> with. Yeah. Poker is a very complicated game. It takes time to understand. So you need to put in the hours and the best way to do that is on the internet because you can put in a lot of hours 
whenever you have the time and you can play for a small amount of money to learn. So it doesn't cost you so much. I play a lot on the internet. I make money of course, but also it's a great way to try new different strategies. You can be very aggressive, very tight and you know, on different levels and see how it works. It's a great uh, educational tool. There's not been a lot of big hands against big hands, kings against queens. You know, we had that early hand, set over set, Pass. and that's about it. Be pious, Pass. and the deck shall provide. <laughs> provide for all. <laughs> pious? Spell that for me, will you? I'm a cowboy, you know? I don't, I don't have that word in my vocabulary. It's like apple pie, but with an S. <laughs> <laughs> now, apple pie, I know about that, <laughs> apple pie. Well, Ian Fraser raising up on the button with the six high. Apple pie and Alamode. He, he has to get his cat out of the way. That's always nice when you have to move the cat to, to get at the chips you need to raise with. That's 4,000 on McGill. And I think he's re-raised with seven. Wow. wow. It's like he can see through the cards. Is that completely situa situational? Well, you know, it, it, it's, it's situational in the fact that he's the chip leader. You do not, ra he's, he's saying, do not raise my blind. I'm the chip leader. You're going to respect me, you know? Uh, and, and not only that, he had the suited connectors. Obviously, that's a hand he feels comfortable with uh, making a play with. And I like it too because it's a two way hand. <coughs> You know, which means if the flop comes, if you do get called and the flop comes high, you can represent like you had a big hand. And if it comes low, you can surprise attack your opponent. Come in from the pl from the flank and, you know, and maybe win a big pot. <laughs> Come in from the rear guard, yeah. <laughs> Fraser here. It just seems like he has not gotten comfortable on this table. Oh, again. Mm -mm. He's, he's raised something like four in the last five. Now, you, did you see that? You see how he scratched his nose there? That is a tell, ladies and gentlemen. When you fidget with your nose, okay, I, I'm going to give you a tip here. That displays weakness if it's if it's an involuntary action. It's almost like Ken Leonard. He just folded king queen on the button. I'm cold. He wanted to re-raise and then just didn't pull the trigger. Mm -hmm. Is it just too early for something like that? Yeah, I think so. He doesn't because you want to have you want to make moves with you know your extra chips, not chips that you need uh, you know uh, to give a, that would okay. give your, your position away. Right. Now, what is Finney doing Eight here thousand. with the Jack Six? You think? He peels off the flop. He's defending mm -hmm. his blind, and now they've Come both here. missed. But Fraser's firing. Mm -hmm. Well, that's you know that heat might be getting to Finney a little bit there. He's even scratching his head over on that one, saying, you know, what am I doing taking a flop with Jack Six? <laughs> I mean, when a guy is raising every hand, yeah. do you call with a lot of hands in the big blind or do you do like Dave no. McGill and just draw the line? You draw the line. You say, you know, you're either going to play the hand or you don't, okay? Especially when you have a, a weak a hand as Jack Six. You either re-raise with it and, and make a play with it or you fold. You know, you don't want to see flops with it. If he flops a jack, there's a lot of times he's going to be dominated by a better hand. Queen jack, king jack, ace jack. You know, it's just too dangerous. I he's fighting me for a minute. Taking a cards. breather. And uh, back to reality. He's letting McGill mm -hmm. make a move for the button. Jack deuce of spades. I like that. Showing some okay. discipline. Okay. You have the chip lead, but not necessarily, you're not going to steal. You're saying, I'm, I'm not stealing. Thanks Establishing nine, table image for later. Finney now with ace nine of clubs. Yeah, Finney just called, and the raise has come from Nichols in the big blind. Do you think Finney is trap calling here? Cool. Well, well I, I thought I thought Finney was in the big blind. I'll have to take a look at it as the cameras uh, come overhead here. Well, Dave Finney. Either way, he's flopped top pair. Okay. Yeah, but Nichols is the Yeah, aggressor. he did have the big blind, and Seven Finney thousand. did raise, and he did lead at this pot before the flop. He's leading on the flop. Wow. Cool. Now, this is a delayed bluff by Nichols. He's gonna he he's calling to set up a play on the turn or the river where he's gonna try and take it away from Finney, thinking that he doesn't have an ace. Well, no, oh, he I think, check no, Finney, yeah, he, He's no, trying no, to he's play called, right here. No, Finney, this Finney's on the right. Finney's in seat two, and Nichols is in seat three. 
Oh, okay. I apologize. <laughs> you just I got apologize, for audience. A second. You know, That's everybody's playing their hand backwards, <laughs> so I just figured I'd commentate backwards. <laughs> I apologize for calling that action wrong. It it would have been an almost impossible call for Finney, but Finney set a trap here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, I mean, will Nichols continue this bluff? Check. Or will that ace slow him down? Has has Finney's slow played too long now? Wow, I can't believe that I transposed these two (laughs) players. But, you know, uh, that's basically what's been happening with this play, as you can see. The play is transposed. Uh, Finney, you know, he's just, now he's going for the Academy Award. All right. You hear that sigh in the voice? That's another tell. He's he's displaying weakness, which is the opposite, which means he's strong. Yeah, he he seems very, very reluctant to have to raise, but he has. And uh, the only thing Nichols can do, well, I mean, he has to fold. I mean. Well, or move all in on a complete bluff, which would just be suicide. I mean, I. I think this is just a delayed fold to uh, pretend like he had a hand, uh, some semblance of a hand. And I think he's going to fold hopefully within the next minute. (laughs) (laughs) Spinny, an old hand from Birmingham, and uh, he certainly knows how to set the trap and spring it. He certainly does. He kind of looks like a fur trapper a little (laughs) bit, doesn't he? (laughs) Perry Green himself (laughs) would... uh, (laughs) Give credit to Dave Finney there for that hand. Sorry, Dave, miscalled the action on that <laughs> hand. You played it shrewd, my friend, shrewd. That's going to send a real message to Nichols about messing around with uh, Finney. Mm-hmm. We're one man down, but it's still all to play for here at the PartyPoker.net World Open. Only one player is going to make it through to the semi-final stages, so it doesn't matter if you're the first to leave or the last to walk. If you're not the last man standing, then it's all been in vain. Winning is the only thing that counts in this game. Welcome back to the PartyPoker.net World Open. TV table Superman Ian Fraser and Swedish poker god Ken Leonard are at the table this evening along with a strong collection of pro players. Already lots of action, so let's get back to the game. Pass. Raise to 12,000 total. Pass. Fraser's starting to feel a little punch drunk, and uh, mm-hmm. tell you what, if this ace queen gets cracked. Oh, he will be cracked for sure. At least he he, uh, he comes in for a raise here, I believe. 8,000 more, triple the bet. Right. Now yeah. that's, you know, now that's good. Well, he's coming in with now, a big and bet, now look, now look here. I'll go on him. Oh, this is real trouble for Dave Finney. Now, wow. I think the heat has gotten to Finney, and he may just have a stroke here when he sees uh, Frazier, who's certainly going to call here with ace-queen, I would think. Well, the, the size of this overbet is yeah, about 100,000, Kenna. Is, is, is right. Finney just trying to shut him down? He is. Well, Exactly. He's trying to take the pot and put the pressure on him right now. He sees the blood that we were talking about earlier. I mean, you advocated re-raising to the Fraser right. raise, but uh, has Finney gotten, does he come over the top too much, or is he just a bit unfortunate to find Fraser eight, eight, with the better five, ace? Nine, five, five, five. Well, no, he's he's not playing his hand. I think he's playing the heat, you know. You know, those lights and those cameras can get hot, and you just never know when, you know, you might snap, and I think you know a synapse has definitely uh, been severed here because uh, for him to make this move is way out of line. Well, Fraser, an all-in will know. move. Yeah, I mean, Fraser. But it, he may get away with it, you I know, because. I think a lot better hands than this. Fraser. Well, no, Finney's tight reputation, and uh, right. I mean, so he doesn't he's like trying his to use, ace-queen. Exactly, he's trying to use his re- reputation along with the lack of confidence that Frazier must feel right now after losing with the aces and losing consecutive hands. It looks like he wants to fold. I guess, does it look a bit like ace-king? Well, not only that, he figures, well, he's got to have a pair or ace-king. How can my ace-queen be good here? He's shown down nothing but winning hands, and look at how look at how calm and cool he is. <laughs> he looks like he's falling asleep. 
He does. I mean, that is a heart of a lion, ladies and gentlemen. Right there. Look at that. That is a poker face. 55, 55. He has got to know that he's making a play here, that he doesn't have the best hand. Oh, Fraser looks like a man of his experience knows that he is taking this pot away, and now he shows him and folds. Fraser has just, sometimes you get in a wrong oh, rhythm. Goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Fraser, when rhythm. he watches this at home, he's going to have to go to the bathroom and flush the toilet, ladies and gentlemen, because he, I, I tell you, I don't want to say it, Jess. I really don't want to say it. It's sickening. It's a sickening feeling. A lot of my game is all by feel. You know, if I feel um, one of the other players might be a bit weak, then I'll be double aggressive, you know. Um, I don't mind following it through. Um, I've learned not to put my chips in so willy-nilly now, uh, as I used to, but I suppose I had a little bit of luck before. Um, I've got a very good game at the minute, and um, every time I go to play, I'm really looking forward to it. Fuzzy lights and Ian Fraser must be seeing Morning, double so right to now. He's got to be a little fuzzy. He, I, I mean, he looks hot Rude to me. Long. I mean, you could fry an egg on his Stay head, I bet you. What do you do, Eight. Kenna, when you're feeling like Ian Fraser? Well, you know I'll tell you what I do, and it usually doesn't work. I just throw all my chips in the <laughs> pot and try to get lucky because nothing else is working. And here it is, another hand that's going to test him. Ace nine. He just laid down ace queen, and now he looks at ace nine. Poker gods must be crazy, or else they've got a sense of humor. Fraser now. Sadistic pay. humor might Pass. be. See now, let's see. Let's see here if uh, it's the old bleeding, you know, from the wound. Uh, I ain't got enough to um, pass. I don't think. McGill's asked for a countdown. Yep. You make me count these for yeah, something or yeah, nothing. Yeah, for something. Yeah. He yeah. might. He might take a bite. 40,000, 45. This is what we were talking about earlier, Jesse. You know, the frenzy. Has the frenzy and the circling of the sharks begun? Do you, do you, if McGill does re-raise Ian Fraser, do you think he's laying down the hand? I don't think so. I think he's going to throw <laughs> his hands in the air and just say, I give up, I call. At least I hope he does. Because 50-50 might be his best shot right now, and that's about what this hand w will play out to, which means basically ace-9 against two threes when you have two overcards is what's called a coin flip. Basically, it's a 50-50 proposition. Oh, I know you're going to pass now. What would you do if you were McGill right now? Call, raise, or fold? Uh, you know, I think I have the chip lead. <coughs> you know, I sense my opponent is on the ropes. You know, you got to go for the knockout punch and and take your opponent out and and you know just keep putting the pressure on it it's it's tough to tough to do but you know there's only one winner here john mcgill seems to be of the same mind he counted out red and went back for more right this is a buffet bet Nine second helping here for chips and he does he smells the blood we raised Ian Fraser twisting his neck this way and that. And he's folded straight up. Strong, wow. strong discipline mm -hmm. by Ian Fraser. Well, especially when you've lost multiple pots, you know. It's so hard to, you know, I can tell you from experience. And look at even how he's sitting. It looks like he's been hit in the gut. And that's how it feels when you're out there. You know, it feels like somebody has just fitted you. I mean, he's a champion. He's won about 600, 700,000 recently in televised tournaments. But it doesn't but matter. No, it doesn't help you here. Believe me, he's not thinking about that 600 or 700,000. He's thinking about, I lost aces. I lost ace queen. Now I'm losing this. I mean, who's next? You know, who's going to hit me next with the two by four coming up from behind me? Oh, wow. And I'll tell you who it's going to be. It's going to be John McGill again now waking up with Pocket Kings, the second best possible starting hand. He does not look happy nice. at all. He looks, looks pain to make this raise. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And another tester for Ian Frazier with ace eight. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, and this is, this is what happens. It just doesn't let up. The game can just, you know, one mistake compounds another mistake, compounds another one. And 
Yep, you see, pretty soon you just unravel. I'll go away, guys. <laughs> I'll tell you what. <laughs> Fraser was playing one kind of music, and uh, the rest of the game's been playing another. He's been offbeat all night That's long. That's right. And now, does anyone here awesome. expect an ace to hit the board? <laughs> Absolutely not. You can almost see the writing on the wall. Once in a while, you'll see the game, you know, snap you back in tune and, and, and just give you some mercy, but usually... You know, it goes with the trend, and the trend is right now, uh, Mr. Frazier will be walking out the door. Two kings for John McGill. Ian Fraser all in. Needing Look, at, the we're talking about we're talking about uh, timing and in tune. He sounded like a metronome there, <laughs> clicking his <laughs> tongue. Possible backdoor diamonds. The ace, the quickest way for yep. Fraser to catch up and pass McGill. Oh, he has a backdoor straight draw. Now an open end, open ended straight. A four, a nine, or an ace will give him mercy as we go to the river. He's only three to one against. Oh, <laughs> and it's Hold like on, the Mike. deck is like, look at, look at how quick he pops up there. And I don't blame him. I do not blame him, Jesse. I mean, that was just, that had to be a painful experience. There were no favors for Ian Fraser tonight. He's the second player out. Oh, kill me. <laughs> but I didn't say it then because it was He's won half a million in prize money on television over the last year, but it's not to be tonight for Ian Fraser. He's our second player out, and he joins Jesse and Kenna. Kenna and myself joined by Ian Fraser, who's just been knocked out. Ian, you're one of the most successful players in the history of televised poker. You're a man in form, and some days it's probably not worth getting out of bed. I'm absolutely <laughs> gutted. He's, on the way out, he's just told me he had ace, he had ace jack when I had the ace yeah. queen, so I'm really... Oh really man, they, they, were, they were taking shots at you. Yeah, it was like it was like oh, no. you were it was like you were in the in the ring with Muhammad Ali oh, no. and George Foreman. And if that wasn't enough, Mike Tyson come in and That's take it. a shot at you with the <laughs> That's it. And I've been getting plenty of them. Yeah. Well, do you, do you, do you feel it's harder to follow your instincts when you know you've lost a couple of pots and, yeah, of and your confidence it, um, is down? Yeah, for sure. It puts you right on the back foot. You know. Yeah. It, it's really too bad. We felt for you because it, it, if you did pull the trigger there, that was the pot that was going to yeah, rescue you and yeah. put you right back in the match. Yeah, I, I was close. I was close. But. Mm -hmm. uh, commiserations, Ian. Thank no, you, you see it back in one of these tournaments very soon. We're yeah. down to four. Sure. And who's it going to be? Looking at the leaderboard, McGill nearly half the chips in play. Big favorite? Well, you know, he... I, I don't even know that he's a favorite. Believe it or not, I'm going to go with Ken Leonard or Dave Finney, the crafty statesman, you know, uh, to, to overtake him. I haven't reached anywhere else. Everything else is made right, up. Right now belonging to Tony Nichols. <laughs> Let's see if experience yeah, wins film. out. Film. Because certainly to this point, uh, you know, uh, John McGill has been getting the cards. <clears throat> Cards and the chips. He's got the cards. He's got the chips. Pass. He's got the girl. <laughs> you know, I said experience, but you know, no McGill himself has been playing for 30 years. This is the first time Leonard has found an ace in the sm It's the third time straight he's limped in, and uh, the first time he's found a big hand. Do you think he's been trying to set up this play? Well, I just think he doesn't want to give a chip away. He's just going okay. to, you know, be very patient at this point and not make any mistakes, and I like that. He's going to wait. You know, one of the keys to winning at poker is exploiting your opponent's mistakes okay. while okay. making few or none yourself. Yeah, well said. Okay. Here, Leonard's made the straight draw on the turn. McGill now has top pair. 8,000. Yeah, well, this is the problem with playing too defensively. You let your opponent... You know, catch up and uh, and make the best hand against you. Now Leonard makes his first play of the night. 14. Okay, check raising with just a semi bluff with an open end straight draw with one card to come. Very risky play here. <laughs> it sure is. He's check raised the chip leader with right. uh, not much of a hand. Though well, McGill will be thinking he can only beat a bluff, I guess. Yeah, well, because, you know, Ken has played so tight, it makes it a very, you know, it puts McGill in a very tough position here. He has no kicker. He's thinking, you know, what can I beat? The problem for Ken, actually, is there are draws out there. There's two clubs. There's a possible flush draw, a possible straight draw. So I think that is going to um, 
cause uh, McGill to call this hand? Well, McGill looks like he's thinking about re-raising. I guess he can afford what a great play. What a to great get play more information. Right. I mean, that would be a tremendous play. Oh, my. It would make it a very difficult position for Ken Leonard. But he does just flat call. Yeah, it was a threat bet, wasn't it? He was yeah. just showing Ken. In case Ken forgot right. how many chips McGill had, he was just well, letting right. him remember. <laughs> it's a bluff to see it, to, to hopefully get a check on the river, is what it was. Now let's see if Ken Leonard continues with the bluff or oh if he my. gives it up. Oh my. 22,000. This is tricky. Very tricky. You know, the pot, though, when he bet the 22,000 was 52,000. So now it's up to 74,000. McGill getting over 3 to 1 to make this call. And I think he's going to make it. There's too many draws that miss. There's a flush draw that missed. Oh. Yep, and he does. He makes the call. Right, you are, Kenna. Mm -hmm. Ken Leonard. First play he's made the entire heat. And yep. uh, he caught McGill calling. Right. Well, you know, it's it's a it's a problem here because Ken has played such a patient game. You know, he waited to make the play, but he made the, you know, he may have made the right play at the wrong time. The so Leonard cut in half, down to forty-six thousand. He is seething inside that cool exterior. Trust me, you know, after playing that disciplined, patient game where he did not want to give a chip away, he just gave away a good portion of his stack. 46,000 is a lot of chips uh, to still make something happen, and I think he knows that. And I think his experience will give him, you know, still give him a realistic shot of coming back. It's just about changing your game plan to suit your chip stack, I guess? Well, unfortunately for Ken, uh, it's not going to change his game plan. Uh, cause you know, he doesn't have, uh, you know, any chips to work with, so he's got to wait for a hand. This is something is like the third or fourth big pair that McGill yeah, has picked Yeah, I mean, up. McGill, meanwhile, Pass. just picks up hand after hand. Pass. It's hard to believe sometimes, but uh, <laughs> it happens, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. This game is a game of cycles, and it's, it's so interesting how you will see, you know, big hands dealt to the same player again and again, you know? Yeah. Bring another Thank one. You. you have to break one. that cycle. That's one of the keys. If you're oh, if you're in the opposite position and you're not getting the cards, you have to find a creative way to disrupt your opponent's cycle. Maybe you you know you throw them off balance or, or whatever uh, is going to get the job done. Looking at the chip pie here, kind of McGill <laughs> over half the chips in play. It's pretty strong. It's very strong, especially when you're talking about pie, because I love pie. I gotta tell you, apple pie, a la mode, <laughs> cup of coffee, I'm in there. Uh, right now, not much of a pie for Leonard with only 46,000, but as we know, it's no limit hold'em and a quick double up will vault him into third place. Big stacks of McGill. I mean, having a huge chip lead that like that, it, it gives you freedom to make some uh, speculative oh, plays and it's calls. It's so much fun. I can't tell you how much fun <laughs> it is to be the chip leader. You can be out there dancing around, making bluffs, you know, no fear. Nobody on the table can bust you. You're getting pocket kings every hand. Yes. <clears throat> well, every other hand. He had half of them there. Raised to 12,000 total. Blinds are three and 6,000 now, so this we raise from right. Finney only double the bet. I like that because he can get away with, you know, he can get away from a re-raise without committing too many chips. Now, Ken Leonard in a very tough spot here on a short stack with ace jack. This is a very tough decision for Ken Leonard. You know, he's played a solid game to this point, but you know, I think the I think the jig is up. I think he's got to go for it here. It's raise and a re-raise to him. It is, you know, but they're positional raise. It's a raise on the button and a re-raise from the small blind. So that's to his advantage. Can he pull the trigger? He's going to have a think about it. It is a call for his tournament. And uh, there's enough money in there, I imagine, Kenna, so that Ken knows no matter what he does, if he puts the chips right. in, he's going to have to see five cards. 
Right. It's a key, key decision for Ken Leonard, and he makes oh. the right decision wow. and puts a chip in the pot. <laughs> That's the professional hand. in him. You reach down, no, uh, your gut tells you you have the best hand, and you take a stand. It's the difference between a good player and a champion, isn't it? The champions Absolutely. get the tough decisions right. Yes, and Ken Leonard gets this one right. He's uh, now a 3-1 to one favorite over Nichols' ace-9. <laughs> yeah, Leonard all in, but as you say, barring <laughs> the unfortunate accidents, and we've seen them tonight. Oh, and, and there's another one. Un incredible. Incredible. I mean, he's in disbelief, as you can see. All of a sudden, Leonard goes from 3-1 to one favorite to about 7-1 to one against. Un incredible turn of events. Yeah. And so many times you see this. You know, when a player makes a mistake, uh, the it's almost like the poker gods punish them, you know, uh, even though they make a, a superior play uh, later on. Still a jack in the deck. Three of them, in fact. That's right, for Ken. Ken Leonard. He's going to need one of them right here, Jesse, with only one card to come. Can he do it as we go to the river? So painful. Oh, no, 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 no. Wow. Well, Kenny, you said he can only do what the cards will allow you. The cards allowed Leonard very little there. Well, the big names are falling fast tonight. Ian Fraser already gone, and now Swedish star Ken Leonard is out. He's talking to Jesse and Kenna. We're joined by Ken Leonard, who just went out in fourth. Ken, that last hand, you made a call of championship caliber, and not really rewarded. Well, I feel sick about myself because I have great tails both on John to my left and on Tony to my right. I read them perfectly. And then I bluffed him anyway, John. So I was, I'm, I really want to kick myself in the ass for playing bluffing when I knew he had something, but. Wow, Ken, mate, man. I mean, you have all my respect. I mean, you, you know, I know you're one of the top uh, players out there on the circuit, and uh, I feel your pain. You must be disappointed uh, because you played such a patient and disciplined game, you know. And uh, you know, I, I, I told Jesse that uh, you know I, I love where you're positioning yourself, even though you hadn't made a move yet. And was it? Uh, why did you make the move with the semi bluff on the turn out of position against the chip leader? Because I knew he had nothing on the flop. I was 100% sure of that. Right. And then uh, I made an open, stra open ended straight draw. Right. And then he bet, and I thought maybe he has something now. But I went on to check race anyway because it's a strong move, and I had mm. many outs in case he called. Unfortunately, he called, and then I don't know. I, right. I probably maybe should have checked instead and saved some more ammunition. Any predictions for the final three? Yeah, John is walking on water. He's unbeatable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's like that, you know, sometimes it's like that. Some days, the winner is set in stone. Still three left, though. It's real pressure as we're down to three players in this PartyPoker.net World Open Heat. Every decision matters now, and one bad call and you'll lose everything. These guys are going to have to change gears and take their chances to win this. Luck, skill and nerve put to the test. Let's get back to the action. Yeah. <laughs> this play is almost like a sort of a cash game and not a tournament in a sense at this mm -hmm. stage. I mean, the short stack still right. has Pass. well over 20 big blinds. Yep. This is going to be a battle of fortitude. Press. Um, and experience, savvy. 18,000 total. I'm all in. Re-raised, all Wow, right. Finney, very Look at strong this. move. It, it, he got away with this before. Right, but he might be dipping his hand in the cookie jar once too often. Now this makes it very difficult though. He puts McGill in a very I'm difficult position basketball. because, you know, ace four is not a hand to defend with. You know, does he want to give up his chip position here and risk? that Finney is on a move, because that's really the only thing he can beat. And if he does run into an ace bigger kicker, he's drawing dead at three to one, he feels, or, or very bad, if not dead. Yeah. So I don't exp I think this is a great move by Finney. He makes plays at the right time. <laughs> he does, doesn't he? I mean... He I is shrewd. I mean, McGill is ahead, but it, right. see, most of the hands that he has in bad shape, uh, he's still only six, six to four favorite. That's right, that's right. So if he does get called, he's not going to be in bad shape. But, you know, he hasn't used the play too often 
to where his opponents are going to suspect that he's stealing. And especially he hasn't used it against McGill, this particular opponent. So I think he's going to get away with it once again. I don't see McGill uh, pulling the trigger and calling here. It's just too many chips to call. Pass. Yep. Another great play by Finney. He's really playing some poker there, Jesse. Well spotted, well said. I mean, it's classic no limit hold'em, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. Finney's chips, they appear to be at risk because they're in the center. But in actual fact, he, he hasn't put them at risk, has he? And how do you yeah. like uh, how do you like Anthony Nichols' uh, position here? He's sitting between two gentlemen. He's playing. be good in the zone, He's been playing poker good, yeah. for 20 months, and he's sitting between two gentlemen who have play, <laughs> been playing poker for 30 years each. That's combined 60 <laughs> years of experience. He's given up a little handicap, but he seems <laughs> like he's yes. having the time of his life. Right. Yeah. Seems comfortable. Uh, a little bit of talent can make up for a whole load of experience, too. Can sure it? can, especially these days with uh, the Internet and uh, <sighs> the amount of experience you can gain uh, playing on uh, the computer. So McGill Pass. got bit once and gets right back mm -hmm. up on the horse. That's a, that's a pretty good sign mm -hmm. of a poker player, Keep isn't it? Yeah, no, you know, you here you do see a little bit of an ex okay. inexperience coming into play here. Anthony Nichols holding the best hand with King High. You know, it's okay. It's not, it's not a huge mistake, but uh, you know, anytime you're folding the best hand, uh, oh, there's plenty of pain, boys. You know, you want to take note and not make it a pattern. Good players do lay down the best hand once in a while, not too often. Pass. Blind dog, Pass. blind walk around, ground Skinner, yeah. as Bill Helmut likes to say. Mm -hmm. Pass. Mm. But, uh, it's chip gathering time for John McGill. He's harvesting <laughs> chips. He does seem to be a pretty good farmer <laughs> there. Yeah, Much better than corn. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> huh? They're very slow to coast. Yeah, corn had uh, had the trouble. Me. The crows got to it. How much slow to post? Six. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about, talking about me mentally then. <laughs> Finney in the big blind action on Nichols here from the button. Now, when you're on the button three-handed, you should be raising about two out of every three hands you receive Pass. on the button. I think that's a good fold, though. 10-3, cool. not much cool. to uh, look at there. It's a right. very good barometer there. Mm -hmm. Two out of three hands, really regardless of what you get, I guess. That's right, it? because otherwise you're just giving up too much. You're giving your position away too many times. You know, and uh, you have to uh, command respect in your position and maintain Shame your plan. position on the button. Free flop, free in a sense. Okay. There is 12,000 in the kitty. Right. Ooh, now look at McGill. Once again, flopping the World's Fair. Kings up. 10,000. Again, we find the probe bet. I call this a probe bet or, you know, a... Um, a, a defining bet, a feeler bet, exactly. You're betting second pair, and he should automatically, the antenna should go up when you hear that opponent go. <sighs> you know, it's a, it's a sign of, they want to throw you a sign of weakness when they're really strong. I guess whether or not McGill raises or calls, Finney's going to pretty much shut down, isn't he? Well, we don't know that. We've seen some peculiar plays by uh, Mr. Finney. We <laughs> never know. I don't think he knows what he's going to do, let alone uh, us up here in the booth. But there is that calm, cool demeanor. You know, I mean, he has that down. I wish I had that exterior that he has. Well, McGill Comes with looks years of like he's, he's raising on the flop here. Raise mm -hmm. 20 more. Is that a smart total. decision? Well, I think it is. He sees two to a flush out there. Um... You know, he sees the king. If his opponent has a king, he might get action. I'll give it to him. Pass. Nice fold. Finney defines his hand. You know, this poker is a language, okay? He's saying, I have a pair. Okay, McGill is saying, I can beat your pair. And he's saying, okay, I believe you take it. There is so much timing involved, and you don't know what's going 
through uh, Dave Finney's head. He, he must be happy with his position right now. He might be waiting uh, for Anthony Nichols to, uh, he might rather go against the more inexperienced Anthony Thanks. Nichols than put his chips at risk against John McGill, who has more chips and equal experience. Seems like you can't teach oh. timing. It's, uh, mm -hmm. it's a feel, it's instinct, it's heart. It's all those things you can't describe. Nice. Limp in from Tony Nichols and McGill's big blind, and McGill giving a free flop with some very pretty cards. Yep, queen jack of hearts. Wow, he's flopped open ender and two over cards. Very big flop for John McGill, even though he doesn't have a pair yet. He also has position. 14,000. And he's facing an in, inadvised bet by Nichols. How to play this now? The problem is that McGill faces here, though, is if he raises and Nichols comes back over the top, he, in effect, bets himself out of the hand. And his hand is too strong to be bet out of. So I anticipate that he will call and let the hand develop. The bet is 14000 His other option is to raise here and try for a free card on the turn to make his hand. Yes. And it looks like that's the option he's going to take, Jesse. Yeah, and he'll get that added bonus, I guess, Kenna, which is that Nichols might have nothing and just fold. Right. <laughs> you know, at this point, uh, it's just a great play because he would have gotten, you know, maybe made his hand, maybe got the free card, or if your opponent is flat out bluffing like Nichols was, you just win the pot right there without even having to make your hand. Gil, like you say, everything's working. I mean, <laughs> Has he lost a pot tonight? I don't know. It's, I mean. Freeway. Pass. The rocky waters. For these oh. two, limp in no by race. Dave Finney. And right now it's Nichols in the lead with the king. Wow. Huh? There go the bells. There go the fireworks. <laughs> check. Three kings. They've checked. <laughs> and that might be a tell. That's the most animated check we've seen. <laughs> <laughs> and he's now made a full From house. Dave Finney. Why? Oh, now it's just huge. It's, it's, uh, here we go. The Royal Shakespeare Company <laughs> is coming out. 6,000. I wonder if some hands are too big to bet. Maybe two. Pass. Oh, is that all? And he's giving it to you. I didn't have much. No, no. and he's giving it to you. Where was you? Oh, I had a lot of kick. It's the first time you got raised. Mm hmm. You're really on the button. Nice. You really got something. Yeah, I'm looking at Is this a raise for Nichols? I'm the same. Just like it. Yeah. Raise. Raise out of the small blind with King 10. 33,000 total. Makes it 33,000 to go. Oh, we're going to have some action here. Oh, yes. This Three looks ways. like a collision One. course. Kinda. All in. Yep, it sure does. Mm. McGill has the pair. Nichols the two over cards. Oh, dear. Well, Tony Nichols has said, oh, dear. So he is considering options. Mm -hmm. His option right now is to call or call. You think I, don't think he can, I don't think he can wait any longer. You know, it's a close race. He's a slight underdog. You know, but, you know, how how long can you be chipped away at? Well, look at what he's got. And I think he'll find that he has about 80, 85,000. Right, and the pot is sitting at 155, so he's getting 2 to 1. The worst he can be is a 3 to 1 dog. You know. Think combined here with Nichols' relative lack of experience, uh, he, he, sh he shouldn't be too upset to go for a, a, a something which might be a, a. Exactly. You know, you have to realize at some point uh, that okay. you know I'm going to have to get lucky, yeah. and he does. Rightly, right. he does. And it is only one play that goes forward. 
Mm. So, uh, regardless of what happens here, Kenny, you're saying good call here by Tony Nichols. Absolutely. He's left himself in a coin flip situation against a more experienced player. Get the coin out. It's going to be a close race. Let's flip it. Is it going to come heads for Nichols or tails for McGill? Yeah, I mean, if you're scared of gambling, find another game. <laughs> Excellent point, Jesse. <laughs> Tony Nichols here, all in, but in a great shot to double through. Uh -huh. Nichols looking for a king, a 10, or a lot of hearts. Oh, wow. Royal flush draw. Two hearts on the flop, but the two overcards miss him. Look at this. Two eights oh, he's technically got, he's, leading, but oh, right. Nichols is 60% is, is here. Right, because a queen now makes him a straight as well. So many cards in the deck can hit him. Will the turn hit him? A heart, a queen, a 10, a king. It is. It's a 10. Mm -hmm. And now he just needs to dodge an 8. Anything but an 8. And Nichols is going to double up and be right back in this match. Or a 9 that's not a heart. Oh, that's right. A 9 will give McGill the straight. It's an 8. That's incredible. That's cruel, Kenna. It is cruel. This game can be so cruel, Jesse. You know, it snatches the thrill of victory right from you sometimes. Nichols is in shock. In I'm homeless. stunned. In dazed. What a huge flop. You don't see a royal flush draw every day, but that hasn't stopped John McGill. Trip H, the snowman. Ace, king. Blank, Jack, 10 of hearts. That was the flop for Nichols. He made the best hand on the turn, but the eight on the river, three eights beating two tens. And that royal flush draw had a gap or head up. <laughs> it's that man, Jim, again. Luck always plays its part in poker, but it's never nice when you're on the wrong end of it. Trip eight sending Anthony Nichols home. Let's see how Jesse and Kenna view that one and how they see it going from here. When to gamble, when not to gamble, what, what are the factors? Well, you know, really the factor is strictly your chip position. And that time uh, he was forced to gamble strictly on his chips. But you know what's interesting is this heads up match. We got two 30 year veterans gonna <laughs> duke it out here on the table. I can't wait because we have, you know, two different styles. You know, this Dave Finney, he's a crafty. He's a crafty veteran, and it's going to be really exciting to watch. And McGill seems to be unconscious with the cards right now. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, he's definitely got Lady Luck on his side. And Finney, he's got, you know, the old, uh, you know, the old tricks up his sleeve. So he can actually dash Lady Luck. Will Lady Luck win out, or will the crafty veteran? It's going to be interesting to watch. I yeah. can't wait. Two players and only one seat open at the semifinals. All to play for, really. It looks like it's going to be John McGill all the way, but there's still one man in his path, and Dave Finney has played more games of poker than you've had hot dinners. One wrong move from McGill, and it could all turn. Superstition, a big part of poker. This cat may have nine lives, but McGill has only needed one so far. All the chips right now head up. And the chip stacks say it'll be a quick affair, but is there more to it than that, Kenna? Absolutely. It's no limit hold'em. You know, one double up is going to change the whole difference. face of this. Uh, <laughs> the whole face of this match. Oh, no. Head to head, McGill with a big chip advantage. But Finney hasn't really made any mistakes yet, has he? Well, he's made some great plays. You know, it's, it's tough not to make any mistakes. Uh, you know, in poker because there's so many decisions each hand. But the key decision right now is to pick the hand in which to double up. Five and 10,000 now. And McGill has David Finney at a five to one chip disadvantage. Yep, and, and worse than that, five and 10,000 blinds, that means it's 15,000 every two hands. And uh, that only gives Dave Finney a total of about seven hands to see. McGill with the ace here, yes. ace very strong head up I imagine. Mm -hmm. Very, total. very strong. Raised up to 30,000 total. I'm all in. There all you in. go. Nice all. play. Huge nice break play here. Nice Vinny. Very big break. If he doubles up here, anything can happen. Him. He's going to suddenly be close to 200,000. And 
McGill doing nothing wrong, uh, putting him in with an ace here, heads up. Sorry. Percentages show that a quarter of the time this pot could get split. That's right. And the weird fate for Finney here is he needs low cards so that his kicker will play, but one of those low cards is a deuce. Nice one. Well, a seven, the best thing <laughs> Finney could have hoped for. He takes care of that problem yeah, and sure spikes a seven right on the flop. I mean, it's almost got McGill drawing dead. Right. I mean, uh, that is yeah, it, hand. my friends. I can't pass them two hand. Oh, no, no, no. Can't pass them from No, no, no need to make yeah, excuses nice there, one. Dave Finney. You have, have just yourself. played tremendous oh. poker tonight, and you're rewarded with a double up. And believe me, Jesse, this match is on. Yeah. Game on here. A hundred and... 59,000. This is the first chink in the armor for John McGill. Let's see how he faces adversity. It's the first, the first, you know, even inkling of adversity he's faced and character is defined through adversity. Well, we were talking earlier about uh, how the players could smell weakness and blood at the table, but Finney might have a sniff of something different, a he's sniff of the trophy all of a sudden. Exactly. Did you see how he, sit, he sat up in the chair? It's funny how a pot can do that. He just sat right up all of a sudden. You know, his posture changes, his demeanor changes. So Finney, two stacks, not one now. Cool. He's rewarded with absolutely nothing. Hi, guys. 10-5 mm. against 10-7. That little bit of advantage that McGill has is really kind of wiped away by the position if both flop that pair. Finney has with the button. Check. Check. Both check. If the money goes in here, it's a split pot most of the time. Right. Although that three, pretty good 20. for McGill. Now any card 000. under that's, a seven. Yep, that's going to spell trouble for Finney because it's going to be, you know, he can't really put his opponent on an ace oh. here because he didn't raise before the flop. He's got second pair. He's playing it cautious. 20,000 bet, 20,000 call. Very difficult card on the river for Dave Finney because sure McGill has him wrapped up. Wrapped up tight. Look at those facial features. You see, you see how McGill is just acting so weak, like that card. Oh, that hurt me so bad. But I'm gonna bet anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that is a telltale sign, which 30 years of experience Dave Finney should pick up on, and get away from this hand. Run, run, Forrest, run. Looks like McGill is. He was going for one wow, stack he's, of reds. No, what he's going for is the Academy Award. <laughs> Holy cow. Let me check my hand again. I don't really want to bet. Let me put my chips back. No, I'm going to make a desperate bet. <laughs> ben going to the tank here. He has sold this hard. This is a very hard sell. Let's see if he's got a buyer in Dave Finney. He's going to see how much he'll be left with if he calls and loses, Kenneth. That's what he's trying to figure out. Well, his gut's telling him one thing. It's a really tough decision. Wow, another fantastic <laughs> laydown by Dave Finney. I'm telling you, that is a tough, tough laydown. His opponent didn't raise before the flop. He knows he probably doesn't have an ace. He's flopped second pair. You know, it's very reasonable to think that you have the best hand here, but his discipline, his experience told him that he was beat and he laid the hand down. Fantastic play by Dave Finney. John McGill is a card rack today. <laughs> yes. I mean, every hand he looks at, he has the best hand. If Dave Finney comes back and wins this match with the hands he's being dealt, phenomenal performance. He's also facing the cat, by the way. Uh, Let's yeah. zoom in on that cat. I mean, this is this is the nine live cat that he's facing. Call or raise? Oh, there it raise. is. Yes, all right. Raise. Finney, sensing weakness, says, "Let's pump the pot." Good play. I'm a dog man myself. I'd raise this pot. Thirty thousand more. The average hand heads up is queen seven. Finney has slightly better than that with queen nine. He senses weakness. His opponent is limped in the pot, wanting to see a flop. He says, uh-uh. 
I race. It's almost like McGill wants to call because he wants to bust Finney in one hand. It's almost like Finney has driven him to impatience. Isn't that funny? And he's the one that's winning all the hands. And he's the one that's impatient. He's the one with the chip lead. And he's the one in, that's impatient. This is the wonderful play that Dave Finney has put on McGill. He's turned the tables. Jeez. Is McGill thinking of the re-raise? I think so. I think he is wearing him down. The p hard part is it's going to be tough for Dave Finney to take a stand with Queen-9. He's got a sense that it's the best hand right now because he senses the indecision of his opponent. Look at that indecision in his face. He's biting his lip. Could be call, raise, or fold. He doesn't know what he's going to do at this point. Believe <laughs> Three me. Three rings all in. There he goes. Wow. And he calls him quicker. Now that is setting a trap, my friends, with queen high. Tremendous play by Dave Finney, no matter what the result comes. What he, <laughs> I'm surprised he's shocked. I could look. I mean, he must not be aware of how he wears his opponents now. As we go to the flop, he's got to avoid a four, a five, or the clubs, Jesse. Yeah, I have to love this. Dave Finney called like a shot. He knew what was going on. And, and he flops the queen. I love it when great plays are rewarded, and it's rewarded right here. Yeah. McGill needs running clubs, running pairs. He's Ooh. halfway there. And we oh. know how <laughs> lucky McGill is. He could sneak out a five or a four here. Oh my goodness, what a nail in the coffin that would be as we go to the river. Oh, it's <laughs> safe. It's an ace. And let me tell you, Dave Finney doubles up, and we have a match on our hands. Dave Finney called that re-raise all in so quick, Kenna. It, it, it was almost like he... He just knew automatically. I mean, it, he he didn't even give time to well, for he, us to say what a good play it was. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, he he put chips in the pot, and he knew that he could not sacrifice, you know, that raise. Once he made that raise, he was committed to the pot, and McGill should have figured that out and got away from the hand. His only play was maybe to call before the flop and then make a play after the flop. Did he call because he knew he was ahead or because he couldn't afford to go behind? Either way, looking at the pie. Oh, Finney close. has just added a piece of pie. Yeah. Ship over another piece of apple pie and add some a la mode as he closes the gap. <laughs> oh, an exciting heads up match we have on hand here tonight. So McGill still with the chip lead, but Kenna, he's displayed in Patience. And uh, that'll give Finney a lot of confidence about his strategy right now. Absolutely. It's a tremendous strategy. And as I said, Jesse, he's he's displayed impatience while he's winning hands. Imagine when he loses what's going to happen. The wheels are going to come off. <laughs> Finney will be asking if they can roll back the blinds, if they can extend the levels. He's ready to sit here all night long. He is. He reminds me of Yoda. I mean, this guy be the force <laughs> be the force 5000 on the button cool. any raise just call it again no raise here is the flop it'll be on mcgill and this flop a little bit more for finney he's got a flush check. draw here a little okay. bit more a lot check. more Both check. Straight draw, flush draw. Check. Okay. Both checked. <laughs> <laughs> he can't even be bothered to check. <laughs> well, McGill could take it away right he now. He absolutely could. He could steal position here, make a small bet. It's worked for him before, but you know what? I think Finney has worn him down, and he's just ready check. to give up. All right. You, um, you lost see? One. You see what I mean? He's just giving up. <laughs> I mean, you can wear your opponent down in so many ways. You mm -hmm. can wear your opponent Both. down by aggression, or you can lull him to sleep. <laughs> you see, he has, he has lulled him to sleep. I, I, I'm pretty sure his head's going to hit the felt pretty only. soon. <laughs> He's <laughs> there was a professional was wrestler who was famous time. for that sleeper hole. Oh, yeah. He's, he's playing the rope-a-dope out of him. He's saying, boop, boop, boop. You know, just...
Well, you know, well, he's well, frustrated, well, and that's well, what Muhammad well, Ali did. He just well, frustrated his opponents, well, right, till they just swung well, themselves well, out, and they had no energy well, left, well, and then he just came in for the kill, and that's exactly what Dave Finney is doing here. <laughs> <laughs> it's hysterical. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen it's a head-up match please. like this. Well, you know, McGill could come back here. I mean, he's he, he's run well. He's holding superior cards. But I can tell you, he is frustrated. I'd love to see I mean, it's just written all over smoking. his face. And when I see that as I'm their opponent, me. Oh. believe me, I'm coming in for the kill. It's like gaffing a fish. Okay, the fish is up to the boat. I had a lump on my you know? And, and he's and he's wailing around. Yeah, hospital. he's still in the ocean. But believe me, the gap Tell is me, coming. Uh, don't get buying any long playing records. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, there's the ace. Does anything cool. shake this Anyways. Dave Finney? He's unflappable. Deal with nothing, but he's going for the raise. Yep. Now this is going to be interesting. How how Finney plays this? Does he sense the frustration in his opponent enough? I'm to all in. Yes, all he in. does. What a tremendous play by Dave Finney. Spring the trap, and he leaves McGill no out here. McGill can't call. How did he know? How did he know McGill didn't have a bigger ace? Okay, he senses weakness. You see, he senses the frustration in his opponent. All he has to do is look across. Tell me, I'd have to have one of them boxes. He doesn't know, but <sighs> you've got to go. You've got to play with heart. You've got to play with instinct. You know, and he's just doing it in the subtle of ways, unlike my commentating because I'm just so excited to watch this great play by Dave Finney. Well, McGill busy mm -hmm. counting his chips. He, uh. He's realizing it's been one-way traffic, and he it's can't just, figure out how this guy well, is beating him. It's nice. slipping away. It's like a man that's holding on to a cliff with his fingernails, one. and he's starting to sweat. Sooner or later in poker, you'll see everything. And in this fast ram and jam wow. game of the modern poker world, Kenna, we're seeing something completely different. The subtleties of the game. And I got to tell you, Jesse, my wife hates when I use this term, but I told you so. <laughs> I mean, this Dave Finney, this crafty veteran, is showing us, you know, some new facets of the game. Subtlety. You know, and uh, it's just really exciting poker to watch, and it's a pleasure being here. I mean, McGill has to be talking to himself, saying, I got to do something, I got to do something. Should what? he change the game? Talking to himself? He's got three voices going <laughs> inside his head, besides the one that Dave Finney's setting across the table. Yeah, he's got, you know, at, at some point now he's getting frustrated. Okay, so, you know, he's got to settle down, he's got to breathe, he's got to gather himself and realize, hey, I still have the chip lead here and I am not gonna let this be taken away from me. Can Finney close the door? Inch by inch, row by row, let's get back to the game. Ivy, but he's come out with Rebel Still Rebel. Still heads up and <laughs> Finney telling old rock oh, and good. roll stories. You, you know see, what? You can it see he's old rock. Yeah, he's, 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 yeah, he's, he's talking no, about music years and years uh, it's, it's, it's very uh, and you know, he looks like apropos he's getting because he's gonna be singing his opponent a lullaby and putting him to sleep if if things uh, continue along this trend. Well, that's a good hand for John oh. McGill. He's gotten a bit dry lately. Right, and here again, once again, he picks up the best hand with ace-queen. Finney's got a very playable holding. Yes, 10 jack of clubs. This could hold trouble for Dave Finney, I tell you. His eyes have gotten very alive, has Dave Finney's. Wow. Now, this is an open-end straight check. for Dave Finney. And a seven or a queen will make him a straight. 30. 30, I anticipate he'll call this bet. And if a queen comes on the turn, believe me, this match is over. I'll go all in. Oh, wow. What a, a stronger play than calling, moving all in. Yeah, and McGill, he's got the winning hand, but he's got no pair. He's got no pair. It's going to be very tough for him to call. He might just call out of frustration. That's the only part that Finney is at risk here, that McGill might call out of frustration, even thinking he's behind, but that an ace or a queen might save it. Well, if McGill calls and loses here, he's going to only have about 100,000. I mean, wow. surely that voice is telling him in his head, you're beat, you're beat, he's tight. Absolutely, Jesse, but his problem is that he's been beaten up on so much that he might just make a stand and just say, screw it. I call, I need an ace or a queen to win. Little does he know that he has the best hand right now will sense 
rule out and have him fold his hand or will frustration win out and he makes the call the right call now look at the calm demeanor over dave finney i mean this guy is absolutely incredible he not a even mobile. a twitch feet of sweat was tripping down this looks like oh fold. this this is a pure sign of a fold when opponent looks back at his hand he's sweating McGill might sense something. All of a sudden, he senses something. He looks over at his opponent. He might be picking up on something. He doesn't. Finney gets away with it once again. He takes down the pot. Tremendous poker by Dave Finney. <laughs> You know, that, that is the biggest move level. Finney has the made. And he seven, waited until there was some serious thousands. dosh in the pot. Incredible. You think this game doesn't take heart? <laughs> Dave Finney just displayed it right there. No. The sleeping tiger, Dave Finney. Woke up no longer roared. crouching. <laughs> He's standing. I wanted you to call in. <laughs> yeah, you did. Oh. <laughs> you don't want to swim. I'll get it all. Hang on. All right, my Thank you. Oh, my goodness. He did tell the truth. He did want a queen. KJ, with that pot, right? Dave Finney has creeped into a virtual dead heat wow. with John McGill. There's almost nothing in it now. <laughs> He's erased the chip lead. Which is where I used to stop before. Oh, up to 286,000 and animated now. It's expensive there, yeah. More to come after the break here on the PartyPoker.net World Open. Don't go anywhere. A pair. Surely. That's, that's going to breathe a sigh of relief. I mean, is McGill's problem that he kind of feels like if he oh, yes. does get money in, Grace. he's never going to get action? Well, I don't think that's his problem. I think his problem is he subconsciously must feel like Four Dave Finney has let him into the forest, okay, and then let go of his hand. Right. I'm all in. In the night. Oh, here we go. Here is the action. And I expect McGill to call here. He's got a pair. He's going to take a stand. And he just cannot be thinking logically right now because he's so frustrated. If he was thinking logically, he has to fold because there's no hand he's going to be a favorite over. The best he can be is 50-50. And if Finney has a bigger pair, he's a 3-1 to dog. But I think frustration might get him get the better of him here. You can, can see it all over his face and he might just call out of frustration. <laughs> you can see it. Hmm. He is not a happy camper. This Finney is what is poker is about right here. And if he calls, has he mentally given up? Well, I don't know. You know, he just, you do have to take a stand at some point. And I think frustration might just get the better of him, even though this is not, as we know, it would be a good call. But, you know, in his position, not seeing the cards would be a horrible call. Because, you know, for certain he's against two over cards, which means that it's total luck for him to win the hand. It's 50-50. Every time we've called, you've hit your flow. And if he's against the pair, he's, you know, close to a four to one dog. He's really of two minds. Oh, doesn't know what to do with his it hands. Looks, it looks like he's bracing himself for the inevitable of pushing his chips in the pot. Maybe he'll throw the cat in there for good luck and just say, oh, please. Wow. It's all come down to this. Sometimes when you lean on an opponent. Head now, but well, I stay ahead or not, so yeah, well, now he's rightly analyzed the hand. And you just lean on an opponent too much, you know, and, you know, eventually they'll just call out of frustration. No problem. And now he's on the clock. That's going to add even more pressure. Yeah, to 30 an, seconds or his hand right, will be dead. To an already pressure-filled situation. Usually in the situation when they get the countdown, they just... 
don't know what to do and they just go call. He's folded! Oh, wow. And with that, Finney's gonna take a lead! Wow, well, I am right. shocked. You're right. What? You're right. You're exactly right with your judgment. <laughs> wow. You know, Thanks, I gotta applaud Dave. You know, uh, I mean, John uh, McGill here. You know, I, I've been uh, singing uh, praises for Dave Finney, but uh, McGill to lay down that hand with the frustration he was going through and the anxiety, you could see it all over him, showed to me, yeah. a deep discipline, you know, and patience to wait for a better spot. Yeah. And I, I got to applaud that lay down. Isn't this just a fantastic match to watch, Jesse? <laughs> it is. It's something very different. And uh, cool. he's calling again. Now, I think Finney really yeah. needs to change gears a little bit. You know, I mean... Uh, it's hard for me to question his tactics, but, you know, routinely calling and letting your opponent uh, flop a better hand uh, than you when you have position cannot be the correct strategy as uh, a general rule. 20,000. 20, and now McGill betting with nothing. Pass. And Finney has passed an ace on a paired board. <sighs> right. Well, you know, he's... You know, his strategy is working for him, but I got a question, you know, you hard hard to question. I mean at the end of the day, can a big blinds just punish passive play, don't they? They really do. They really do. Now Dave Finney, now he oh. now you might even see a leak in Dave Finney's game here. He's okay. frustrated. He's gotta be frustrated to be limping in with 10-3. This is no hand. Absolutely no hand in the way he's playing, trying to make hands. What can you possibly make with 10 3? A pair of threes. <laughs> <laughs> There's the answer to that question. <laughs> now, will he you. take a stand with his pair of threes, though? Well, it's. McGill is going to take what the game yeah. gives him, and right now, That's Finney is giving everything. He's shown no propensity to stand <laughs> up. Wow. And here again, he, he lays down. Wow. All of a sudden, Finney slipping away. McGill has beaten him about 120,000 with no answer. Wow. I mean, you see, and you can see the posture in this game, how it's affected. Look at John McGill now, okay? He's sitting up. He's not biting his lip. He's not fidgeting. His confidence is restored. And, you know, he's taking it to Dave Finney. Ken, I think McGill has wow. won nine out of ten pots. This could be oh. it. This could be it right here. All He's right. got oh, rockets. Oh, wow. Yep. You called it. Finney's raising with a jack, and McGill's got aces. This is a shocker. It is Dave Finney whose patience and discipline has eroded by McGill's constant jabs. Why is he waiting? Is there any argument for just calling here and letting Finney lead? I see he wants to make sure he gets all of Finney's chips in this pot at this time. I think, you know, that that, that is a reasonable play. I thought that Finney was already overcommitted and that McGill should have just moved in and, and, and Finney would automatically call. You know, when you go through a battle like this, you know, um, hour after hour, hand after hand, the psychological warfare just wears you down and even as well as Dave Finney has played, he's susceptible to making a mistake, and he stepped in a big puddle here. Yeah, and uh, that decision of McGill to lay down the fours earlier looks so smart right now. Free race. Free yep. Race. He's going to try and end it right here. He's going for the all jugular. All he's all in. He's put the cat mm. into the pot. Finney wants to... Have a count and see if he can play his way out of this one. Well, he's done it before, and certainly he has enough chips. But the real question is, to himself, does he have the stamina? Those stacks, about 50,000. The ones of blue, he's got about 100. It'd be about 160 if he folds here. Plenty Kenna. of chips, but, you know... He's got to be worn down. I mean, his stamina to come back from nothing to the chip lead and now have it reversed, I can't tell you how much strength this has. Oh. And sure, yeah. He's called. Absolutely. And he is in really, really oh. poor shape. 
The I understand aces. This. I understand well, this. Well, got it to do to beat them. <laughs> Some work to do, he says, to beat that. He's going to more than likely have to make a straight two pair. Good luck. Yeah, Finney wow. hoping he was 50-50, maybe 7-4 to four again, something like that. No. Is the fat lady in the house? Hell, I'm afraid so. Certainly is. <laughs> She's warming up. La, 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 la. Well, at this stage, I think Finney's only out is for a split pot. It could la, come la, deuce la, four. La, la, la. That's about all. La, 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 la. Queen King. That's la, what he la, needs. La, 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 la. Oh, a deuce splits the pot. Oh, that wouldn't be fair. It would be fair. You've played tremendous, Dave Finney. Hey, Will it be the it deuce? Be Go to the river. I've seen that a million times. Here's the river. Okay. It's well, a king. Okay. And this one mercifully yeah. has come to an end <laughs> after an epic, epic battle, yeah. Jesse. Brilliant play from Dave oh, Finney, one. but John McGill from start to finish. He was up, he was down, he came roaring back. Around. He's going to the semis. Great heads up clash, but Dave Finney couldn't quite pull it out of the bag. Let's hear from him now. Somehow I've missed it. I've been here before. You know, it's like watching a film. I've been second a few times before now, and it's like, you know, I keep uh, looking at myself and it's like, what are you doing wrong? But they do tell me one adage in gambling. The luck will change as long as the money holds out. So John McGill into the semi-final and into the half a million dollar prize pool. That's the good news. The bad news is that he joins Tony G's table. Our third heat winner is now with Jesse and Kenneth. We're here with the champion tonight, John McGill. John, congratulations. Thank you very much. Now, Cheers. you played nearly as many hands head up against Dave Finney as it took you to right. knock out the other four. It was a tough match. It was a great game. I was going to sit back and see what happened, and I thought, I'll just go for it. Just push and push and see what happened. And one hand, he caught me, and I thought, I'm in trouble here. He got, frankly, back to halfway yeah. again. So I said to myself, I just have to push on, keep going. <laughs> I thought he was, he was doing a lot of just calling instead of raising, do you know what I mean? So I thought, I'll wait my chance here, and I'll get the tips off, and you know. Uh -huh. Well, you know, I was exhausted just watching the match. <laughs> I can't imagine how you feel. Yeah. I see your, I see your sweat, and you Absolutely. come right from the right from the battlefield. <laughs> you know, the key hand really was um, that that I thought for you was when uh, you laid down the two fours. Yes. I mean, what I, I gotta applaud you. What courage that must have taken because you looked like you were at wit's end. You were frustrated. Yep. He was having his way with you, and it looked like you just wanted to get it over with. And somehow yeah. you surmounted the the, the discipline temptation. to. Throw yeah. it, and the temptation to play mm -hmm. that hand and throw it away. Take us through that hand and what you were thinking. Well, I seen the pocket fours. Uh, I believe I raised, and uh, he'd come all over or come over me all in, and I th mm -hmm. put fifty thousand in. I think it was, but it was like very difficult. I thought to myself, he's probably aced something here. I don't. He didn't tell me what he had, and I thought he's two over cards. I didn't think he had a pair because if he had a pair, they probably just called me. So I thought to myself, right, so the whole competition is going to be in two fours me calling the two fours. I don't mind betting with them, but calling with them, no. So I says to myself, yeah. count out my chips, thought about it, and Marty says, you've got so much time left, and I says, that'll do me. Pack, and I'll get him again. I was confident I would get him eventually. Great play, my friend. Great thank yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> really, I you put it to the test, you gathered yourself together, stormed back and took it. John McGill through to the semifinals. Join us next time on the thepartypoker.net. Well done.